Okay, once we have a camera match reference object in place, we can go ahead and create a sheet layer viewport and insert a camera match object. So I'm going to go ahead and create a viewport. And you can give it a name or whatever you need. And we want to make sure it goes to a sheet layer. I'm going to create a new sheet layer. Okay. And we don't really want the planar or screen object showing in this case. I'm going to turn those off. Uh, the layers, we want to show this existing for alignment purposes. So we need that on at first. And later on, we can add the new stuff and turn off the existing. Um, so that's OK. And as far as classes goes, um, if you have any classes that you don't need, um, especially ones that have very complex objects, such as furniture, plumbing, doors and windows, anything you can turn off that's not necessary for alignment, do that and it'll help make tuning the view faster. OK. Um, this file really doesn't have much of that. so. I'll click OK, and now we have a sheet layer with a new viewport on it. OK, so we want to go to the annotations of that viewport. And this is where the camera match object is placed. So I'm going to go up to my menu and place camera match object. All right. Now in this dialog, it wants us first to choose a photo image. Um, there's nothing available in the document right now. It's going to list any image resources that are available. There are none, so let's go ahead and import one. Okay, so I'm going to go in and find on my hard drive our photo image and click open. And I'll go ahead and keep it a JPEG and here we have photo brightness, the default 30%. And what that does is it just lightens the photo a little bit. And uh, usually that helps us see the control lines better. Um, it can aid with other things as well. The rendering uh, is not affected by this. It's only for setting up camera match. Um, OK, the next section of this dialog, we've got a pop-up uh, to choose our reference object. Uh, we only have one in our file. So that's chosen, but if you had more, uh, you could select the one that you wanted. Um, and then this just allows you to choose a style uh, for extension lines of control lines. Um, and these are just dashed extensions of the controls uh, that go across the photo. OK, let's click OK. And we now have that object inserted. And let's go and set this up at a size that we'd like. I'd like to fill a, a letter size sheet up. So I'm going to go ahead and make it you know, maybe eight inches tall. Um, OK. And now the sheet layer was set up with a different size. So let's go and change that. OK, that's a little more realistic. Now go back into the viewport annotations um, and select the camera match object. And let's go and take a look at the options here in the object info palette. Um, at the top here, we have a settings button. And this button brings up those same settings that we had available in, uh, when we created the object. So we don't need that at this point. Uh, and then it shows us here how many pixels wide and tall the image is. And we had set up the printed uh, size here. And uh, when you change one, the other changes to keep those proportions. So if we wanted this to be, say, 11 inches wide, uh, the height will adjust to accommodate that. I'm going to go ahead and keep it at 8 tall. OK, some other options here. Show photo. We can uncheck that, and the photo will disappear. Um, clip photo to viewport crop. 
that allows us to clip uh, the photo if we use a viewport crop. At this point, we are not cropping uh, anything, but we can do that. Um, what else we have? We've got show control lines, so we can turn those on and off as we'd like. Um, and some of these uh, checkboxes will turn on and off depending on uh, other things that are done with the set view and fine tune view uh, depending on the render settings. It does that to get things to show up properly. Um, okay, show reference object 3D axis and uh, really all that's going to do is to show that 3D part of the reference object that we placed in the model. Uh, it allows us to turn that on and off. Um, in this case, we put that on the existing model layer, and we're going to turn that layer off. So this is not going to affect us in the final rendering. Um, what else we have? Show preview object. Uh, this odd green and red object with the grid on it, that's a preview object. And that allows us to visualize uh, something in the camera match object as we move controls around to see how that view is shaping up. Okay, so this preview object can be set to uh, a specific size of an element in the model, and that way it'll help us visualize uh, how that part of the model uh, will display as we set up the view. So let's go ahead and set that up. Um, in the model, I had gone and measured the, uh, the length and width of the building and then I, I measured the height uh, of the, uh, the top of the space here all the way to the top of the capital. Um, so I have those dimensions, so I'm going to go ahead and put those in. So I'm going to turn this off and that will allow me to put three separate dimensions. And those dimensions I had is 222.7. Ninety-six feet and thirty-two feet five inches. And now this grid actually stops displaying uh, because it's so dense and it doesn't want to take too long. So uh, what we're going to do is increase the size of the spacing. Let's try five feet. Okay. And uh, this offset uh, we don't need to offset, but that's if this element was uh, at the corner of this element was at a different location than the uh, reference object we placed. Um, in this case, I have it right at this corner, so I'm going to leave it at 0, 0, and click OK. Okay, so there's the object. It looks quite large because the uh, control lines are not in place. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is move this target control and I'm going to put it right at this top corner. Now I notice my snaps are on and it's much easier to turn off all snaps when adjusting all these controls because you don't really want to snap to anything in the model. Um, so I've just pinpointed this target at the same location in the photo that we placed that reference object in the model. Okay, so the rest is just aligning control lines to these horizontals in the model. So the green ones I'm placing along these lines here and that'll help to define the uh, left vanishing point. Okay, so here... Um, now when you're when you're doing this you'll notice that preview object kinda gets bizarre until you start shaping up the view and in some cases you just want to turn it off. So I'm gonna uncheck show preview object for now and I'll wait until I get these a little closer. And um, one thing I often do is just get these in a very a rough location of where I want them. And then I'll zoom in and adjust them. So let's do that. Okay, these are defining the uh, the blue lines define the vertical vanishing point. So I need to put those on verticals, and I'm using the ridges of the columns 
uh, that are not on the edge because it's a tapered column so I'm trying to pick ridges that are pretty much uh, pointing towards the camera view um, to be more accurate okay so that looks a lot more correct so let's turn on that preview object now we notice it's really large and uh, that's because we have not given any scale to the photograph yet and that is done through a measured line you'll notice here one of the control lines actually is given a dimension and we can choose which one that is and I'd like to give it to my R1 so I'm going to change that over here in the info palette and now we've given that the dimension but the uh, the dimension of this part of the building is 96 feet so let's type that in here and in addition to that we want to make sure that this control line is drawn uh, to that element at the full uh, 96 feet that we've given it so we want to make sure it goes from corner to corner and that will give it a much more accurate scale now let's see this should go down a little bit more and this is where you just want to fine-tune everything now at this stage so um, and you'll see the preview object is shaping up pretty well um, not perfect but it's it's pretty good so it's just a matter of now going in and trying to get these lines more accurate that green line looks pretty good there um, that line looks pretty good needs to come down a little here okay and the red line is a little high okay uh, let's check these verticals out the more accurate these are placed the uh, closer that view will get so you want to really try to be as accurate as possible um, you might notice too that these labels may be a bit large or sometimes they're a bit small um, and that could be easily changed simply by selecting the camera match object and setting the text size so here I'm going to change it to say 6 and you see those all changed size so it's a lot more out of your way okay I think we got things close enough uh, we have the left side of it hanging out a little bit but that's easy enough to deal with through the tuning controls so I think it's time to move on to setting and tuning the view